Roland. What's up? It's Alex from Realm Master Kingdom. We're at the Opera House today to see the return of Annihilator. Speaking of Annihilator, I'm here with the man himself, Mr. Jeff Waters. Jeff? I'm here with the Serbian Canadian man himself, too, so this is awesome. <laughs> it's great to, great to talk to you again. Yeah. So. Uh, so you're currently on your first proper tour, uh, headline tour of Canada in over 20 years. How, how, how's it going and how does it feel? Well, at the beginning, we didn't have any backing, of course, because we haven't toured in Canada. We we don't have proper releases in North America. We do have a label that puts our album up, but it's usually Amazon.com if you can find it. Um, but uh, we didn't have a tour agency that was interested in booking it, no management. Well, I'm the management, but uh, so there was no real backing except for some good people across Canada promoters and venue owners and I figured I'd just call them up and say listen trust me people will want to come out and see us even just one more time because we haven't been touring here for so long um, and it worked everybody's been packing the shows from Victoria on and uh, we've been surprised I mean we didn't realize how many people actually wanted to check us out so fantastic hopefully that's a sign that maybe uh, more yeah. tours of the country to come and not a decade or two later more like maybe a couple years later awesome <laughs> awesome so are these uh, these shows right here across Canada and your upcoming European festivals in the summer, maybe just like uh, the closing of the Suicide Society cycle? No, we, I think we kind of see it as, I mean, technically it would be, but we just see it as uh, a little area between albums because we're, we're all psyched. We finished our new album, 16th studio record, uh, finished it last, well, just before this tour started. So we're, uh, we're kind of our minds on that in the future, but then at the same time we stop and we've got a little piece in our own little world's history of finally getting back to Canada. So we're just kind of seeing that as a block in the middle of other stuff, and just loving every day of this thing. Cool, awesome. So, uh, so I want to talk about Triple Threat, a CD DVD package that came out. It has uh, a live full set from Bang Your Head. A, a documentary with interviews, acoustic right? Thing, yeah. And a, an acoustic set. Yeah. Talk, talk about how the idea to do acoustic set came about. Uh, well, the label wanted to do something because uh, in between our two studio releases, our last one was called Suicide Society, 2015, and they knew we were going to have a new one out in October of 2017. So they wanted to put something out in the middle, and I didn't really want to because we didn't have material, we didn't have things, and filming a live concert is great for fans and cool to have, but. <laughs> To do it right, it costs so much money, and the label I didn't think would put the money up for it. So they said, "Okay, let's put up the money." And I was saying, "Well, okay, that's awesome that you're doing that, but it's still just a concert. So why don't we do a couple other things? Cut the budget down for the live recording. Do it at a festival in, festival in Germany that already had the cameras set up, real pro set up, and bang your head in Germany. But do a live acoustic set, and also do like a hopefully interesting mini documentary that won't put people to sleep." some more behind the scenes, current stuff, not history really, a bit of history, but mostly just where I live or where the band comes to rehearse from around the world, uh, where a crew comes in. It's like a, a mini Metallica band mansion house thing. So there's the studio, the rehearsal, you know, the, the river, the jet skis, the beaches, the, you know, just to see what we do when we're not, uh, the terrible life we lead in Canada. Um, so we, we try to make it a three, sort of like a three segment DVD package. And uh, the Europeans that we know well for so long, they love Canada. The ones that have never been here are just dying for info about Canada. They just have so many things about the country they want to be. They want to be here, but they want to know about things. So we kind of did a little bit of a Canadian vibe on the on the DVD too. So nice because the the documentary as well. You have like uh, interviews with a lot of the bands, like like you said. I always love watching those, like uh, the bands giving their opinions about bands and uh, like the history of they they share with you. So yeah. that's that's always uh, awesome yeah. to watch. Get some cool people talking on there. Yeah, but not just like the typical your friend musicians that you say, can you say something nice about us? We were just kind of thinking, okay, well let's just randomly pick random people. Fans would come on that just send in YouTube videos. Uh, and only the good things, of course, not the bad things. Um, and you know, our president of uh, Epiphone and Gibson Guitars came in and talked. Chris Jericho, or yeah. good old Fozzie and WWE guy, yeah. came in, a friend of mine, and um, yeah. Destruction came in, Mike yeah. and Schmier. And yeah. So we didn't go for, like, let's make a big list and try and get people. We just thought, who are our friends, yeah. people we work with that we know, and, and threw that in in a small section. So yeah. didn't, didn't over overkill it. Uh, nice. All right, so uh, when it comes to, to songwriting, you're the chief songwriter, you write all the songs, but are you open to input from your bandmates if they bring riffs or ideas to the nope. table? Nope. Yes, nope. I am. 
Okay. Um, a lot of guys, since I've been hiring musicians since the end of the first album that we did, because our, basically our singer left the end of the first album, Alice in Hell, in the middle of a Testament tour without telling anybody, and we were all sitting on a tour bus being told, we can't continue with Testament, we gotta go home. Singer quit. Rampage, we, right? Yeah, we found out it was because he didn't want to lose his seniority at his job, mm. but he didn't tell us about that. So that was the, when you have, at that time, the biggest independent metal release of 1989, you are on a high, it's your first album, and then bang, you crash, because... So basically, that was the time I realized I'm gonna hire guys from now on. I didn't want to have somebody just quitting or just leaving or whatever and screwing up what I wanted to do with the band in the future, so uh, basically hired guys. On the new record, usually I do most everything, but on the new record, I brought our bass player, Rich. Uh, Rich, Rich Hinks, yeah, in from the UK, flew him in. And he's got like two brains. He's got the old school metal, Megadeth Annihilator kind of stuff he loves, and sort of the Meshuggah math kind of thinker's metal. Yep. So he's a very technical guy too. So uh, I thought, you know what? I need some fresh blood, fresh stuff for the writing, because I'm, you know, it doesn't matter how much I want to deny it. You copy yourself, you, you get influenced too much by other bands because you're a fan, but also because you run out of ideas sometimes. So I brought in Rich, and he basically kicked my ass and pointed some things out, where to go with things, and no, I don't think that's the right way to go. And So in the end, he ended up staying and doing the whole record with us. So uh, basically, Rich and I wrote the album. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome to hear. Therefore, it's a much different album than the last many. Well, we're actually looking forward to it. So. It's all love songs. <laughs> love songs by Annihilator, coming soon. No. <laughs> okay, so this is like a two-in-one question. When it comes to picking the set list for a show, um, are you the final say on that, or is it a group oh, no, thing no, that's, band? I, I usually pick it first around what I can sing or almost sing, because a lot of the singers in the band were very good and in different ranges, but also some were much better than me at singing, so I kind of had to take the 160 plus songs we have in our catalog, bring them down to about 40% of those and choose from those, mm -hmm. and then of course play the ones we have to play because people want to hear it, is yep. Set the World Fire, King of the Kill, and Alice in Hell. Of course. So uh, that made it easier. We had three songs that we had to play no matter what. And then we just play a few from a new album, maybe one. We like this No Way Out song from the Feast album. Yep, that's so you song. get five or six that you're going to play anyway. And you just fill in the next 10, 11 songs with whatever you can do and whatever you want to do. Awesome. So um, of all the Annihilator albums, which one do you th would you say was the most fun to write? And which one do you think is maybe maybe more slightly pain in the ass? Well, fun was actually the recent one because do the way we did this record, it was I was with somebody else, so we were just joking around and having a good time. So I mean, that, and that's not normal. Usually, it's just me by my, myself in the studio, and you're very serious and closed-minded, and you just see one thing in there. Uh, so it was actually fun to have somebody to talk to while you're spending four months on the record. Right. You know what I mean? So, yeah, yeah. It's good. Who actually knows what he's doing? So um, that was a fun one. I remember King of the Kill was was a really fun record to do as well. Which one do you say maybe 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 is your least favorite of the, well, of the catalog? I think clearly one called Remains in 1997. Oh yeah, Remains. That that really was not a bad record, but it was drum machine. I was fucking around with keyboards. I think it's uh, it's more like a, it should have been like a solo project kind of thing. So if I could take one out of there, I would have taken that out. But then as an artist, you're going to do that. You're going to want to take away certain songs and go, damn, that wasn't a good song or a good album. I should have done better. It's just normal, right? Right, right. Let's see, so. And now we'll just do like a quick lightning round, so fun questions. Sure. So, do you have any any vices? On and off smoker. Mm -hmm. okay. um, oh, and I like to eat fat foods. <laughs> the good stuff. Um, your hobbies outside of music? Uh, not many. They're almost all music related, but I love movies. My fiance and I just watch every movie ever made, I think. Um, I don't know. I, there's a lot of things I love to do, like jet skiing and fun things to do, but you know, when you have music as your life, it's it covers so many different fun and stressful and creative and you know, lots of different things. So it's it's fun to do music, right? Right. And staying on the on the movie thing, what's the last movie you saw in the theaters? Uh, two nights ago in Waterloo, we saw Wonder Woman. Ah, very nice. It's pretty good. Seven point two out of ten. Your official rating uh, of Wonder Woman from Jeff Waters. Um, what is the craziest news story or rumor you ever heard about yourself or the band? Uh, 
that I have a rule that nobody in the band's allowed to drink or do drugs. Okay. And somebody picked that up because I think in the earlier days, and even to now, there's a lot of bands that do this, they say, if you're going to do something, do it after the show, not before. But social media can pick things up and blah, blah. You yeah. also get the typical ones where in Europe people know I hire musicians with the band. They know there's a turnover of musicians over the years for a reason because they simply hire different people and sometimes just to do it, sometimes to try and you know, get to work with amazing drummers, Mike Mangini, Ray Hartman, Randy Black, lots of different great drummers. Yeah. Mike Harshaw. Harshaw, a lot, whole pile of guys. Yeah. I mean, yeah. We've had so many people in the band, uh, which is great for me as a musician because you get to jam with other people. Yeah. Uh, but uh, social media can sometimes, new fans, especially from North America that don't really know us, which is understandable <laughs> since we haven't toured here much, uh, they pick up on right away one guy and a whole pile of musicians that come and go and they put you into that dictator asshole kind of thing, right? So that's kind of a weird one to shed, but uh, people are starting to pick up on it now. That it's, it's like a solo project behind the scenes and a band when we're touring. Okay. Now, one thing I, I like to do is I call the one album round, where I'll name a I'll name a few bands, and you have to name one record that you can keep from that band forever. So, oh yeah. To start off, Canadian. If I know Rush. them. Mm. Next stage left. Oh, nice. Permanent permanent waves. Permanent waves. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Uh, Pantera. Cowboys. Cowboys? Nice. Dio. Holy Diver. Oh, awesome. Exodus. Uh, tough one. You, uh, initially, you want to say Bonded by Blood, but Fabulous Disaster was insane. Awesome. Awesome. Record. Testament. Practice. Awesome. Gathering. Yeah. Metallica. First four. First four? Okay. Uh, Megadeth. Rust. Rust. And the last one, King Diamond. Abigail. Abigail? Awesome. Okay, Tim Hortons or Coffee Talk? Starbucks. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay, I threw so it back on him. Do you see how I did that? <laughs> All right, so uh, just two more questions and then, and then sure. we're done. So you've just been announced for a European tour this uh, fall, which I'm literally jealous about. You Death Angel. You, Death Angel Testament. and Testament. I'm jealous of the Europeans right now. I mean, yeah. uh, we, we just saw Testament it's just here. another tour for us, yeah. that's all. We, we just saw Testament here, awesome. and they were awesome as always, with Sepulchre course, and Fraud, and it was awesome. Yeah. But um, I know you said you and Testament toured in 89, they were yeah. on practice, and you were on Alice and L. Do you have any, like, um, memories from that tour? Yeah, we've been playing with them over the years in Europe all the yeah. time. We hit festivals and tour and play shows and, and that, so we're, we're actually good friends. Uh, and that's the only reason why we're on the tour is because they like us and we like them, and we're honored to be on that tour for sure. Basically, they're just really good guys, and they're in, to me, their they're testament are in a category like Exodus, Overkill, Annihilator. I'm not, not talking about music or popularity, I'm just talking about how when things got really tough for, for traditional heavy metal or thrash metal bands in 1993, when their bands were getting dropped and it was hard to find any gigs, and we were, the bands I mentioned, at least the four of us, were going through lineup changes, a lot of them. And the reason we went through the lineup changes was because the core guys, Eric and Chuck and Overkill, Bobby Deedy and Holt and you know all these and myself, we did not want to stop what we're doing even if the music scene was the shits for this kind of music. Yeah. So you go through different musicians because you need good guys but when there's not the money in the the, the ticket sales and the t-shirt sales and all that to keep the bands going, you find a great musician, but you're going to lose him because he's going to find a better band, a better band that's doing better, I mean, uh, more money, you know what I mean, financial. So a lot of us went through some tough times financially for a good s string of years, but then it came back. And then you've got bands like Overkill and Testament putting out some of their best records they've ever Absolutely. done. The, so the last five, six, seven, eight years has been just ramping up for these bands. Absolutely. And, uh, and I like to see these bands that I can relate to that go through these changes but just do not stop. You know? yeah. so it's a, te a testament to testament and Overkill and Islander Exodus and a few others. Awesome. No breaking up. Yep. No reunion tours. This is like non-stop, man. It's what we do. Yep. So, and the last question to wrap things up, uh, just one uh, little thing about the new album. What can, you, can you give us any teasers, like album titles, song titles? What can you tell us? I, I want to not say this because every artist says that. They make a record, it's their baby. Every painter, every poet, every writer, every movie maker, whatever, always says, oh, this is the best one or almost the best one we've ever done. I have to say it this time because I never say that because it's 
usually not right. Yeah. But uh, because of the way we wrote this time, the way I put the songs together, the way I brought Rich in to work, and what was going on in my head the whole time, it was intentionally trying not to sound like, for example, vocally, Mustaine Hetfield, which are my favorite singers almost, except for Halford and Dickinson and Dio. Um, I tried not to sound like them, which I was doing on the last record I sang, only because I'm a big fan. This time I said I need to get back to King of the Kill to where my voice was more original, and I wanted to make sure this time that the music, music-wise, I was going back to where I was in the first few records. Not trying to copy the early stuff because I'll never get back there. Just trying to do everything the way I did back then. So I think this is uh, this is the one I'm going to gamble on and say it's going to be the the bigger album for us. I think not that we need a bigger album, but the fact we're even here is great. But it's going to be an interesting one. A any titles, song titles, album title? What can you tell us? No, I, I got to wait for the label to say okay, yeah, okay, okay. So we'll look out for that. Awesome. So again, thanks Jeff, thanks yeah, so thank much. Uh, do you have any closing words of wisdom to the fans? No, we love you. Check it out, and uh, our new record, and uh, just listen to the metal, don't ever lose that. See you, man. All right, so catch you and later on this tour of Canada, running through Canada Day in Cornwall, right? Yep. So come celebrate Canada's 150th with an eye later. So we still got Ottawa, Montreal, Quebec City, Cornwall, Cornwall. Two nights after tonight Cornwall. at the Opera House here in Toronto. So yeah. So ca catch them on all the dates and catch them on their upcoming European festivals this summer. And European metalheads, catch Annihilator on tour with Testament and Death Angel this fall. This yep. tour is going to kick your ass. Oh yeah. Three awesome bands. And our, mine too. Yep. <laughs> I love, love all you guys as well. I'm Alex Rowe, Metal Master Kingdom.com. See ya.